Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to cover new set analysis syntax that's been introduced in August 22 release. Well, it's an exciting news because, as you know, set analysis syntax normally resides within the aggregation function. But with this new syntax, now you're allowed to write the set expression externally. And thus, it now adds a lot of flexibility because you can use the base master measure and write different set modifiers to modify the base expression. So we're gonna look at various ways you can reutilize existing master items without creating additional master items in your library. Well, so without further ado, let's dive in. So I have an app that I'd like to use to demonstrate how we can use this new set analysis syntax. So here's the app. Well, it just ba shows basic sales information. Now, let's say we want to show current year to date sales versus last year to date sales and some numeric comparison. So we're gonna create a new sheet. Kate, we're going to create a new KPI. So let's call it sales analysis here. And in this sheet, I'm going to make few modifications. Well, let's remove the margin KPI and here we'll add a new KPI. So from the object asset panel, we're going to add a KPI and the expression is very familiar expression as you know, usually how you write the set expression. It's by sum of sales amount and Normally you would write the set expression right within the aggregation function. So it starts with pair of curly braces. Now we're gonna add pair of angle bracket to add the modifier. And for that, we'll say current year to date flag is equal one in the element set. And then minus, we're going to copy this expression and reutilize the same expression by changing the flag. So instead of current year to date, this will be the previous year to date. Now these are the flag fields that already exist in the data model. So I'm going to use that to compute difference between the current year to date and last year to date cell. And this is the amount, 18.9 million. Let's format this properly here. Okay, and we'll label it current year to date minus last year to date sales. And if I save this as a master item, users can use this in their reservation. Now, problem with this is that because the set expression resides within the, the aggregation function, it is not flexible. With that, we cannot reutilize master item if you want to pass different modifier values. So in order to avoid that, what we'll do is we'll remove this and we're going to use new set syntax. So here, I'm going to start with the set syntax first with pair of curly braces and pair of angle brackets. Here, current year to date flag is equal to one. Same set expression that I use within my aggregation function. Now only difference is I'm writing externally. And then use cells as measure, which is base plane expression. And I'll show you that in a minute, but that is nothing but sum of cells amount. Now I can use the same expression again as I did before, and instead of using current year to date, I'll use prior year to date flag here. And if I apply this, the amount is different because of inheritance rules that we have to follow. Because we're using same sales measure, in this we'll have to make sure that we do enclose both expressions in parentheses to apply proper context for the inheritance. So here, if I apply this, now it's back to 18.9 million. So it's very essential that we provide proper inheritance rules. And in my blog post, I have listed the inheritance rules. 
So this is how you can reutilize same measure and pass different set modifiers. Now to show what the base expression is, if you go into the measure under cells, it's a very basic sum of cells amount. Now you see how flexible it is because I'm externalizing the set modifier and not storing within the aggregation function. So that's one part I want to show you. The other aspect I want to show you is, is the inheritance. So we just talked about inheritance rules while demonstrating how new set syntax works, but I would like to expound more on the inheritance rules. So let's dive back into the examples and look at one more example to emphasize inheritance rules. Okay, to save time, I have already created a base tabular data to provide some customer analysis. So here you can see that I have distinct customer and that's nothing but count of distinct customer IDs. Now in this one, I want to show new customers that have been added recently. And to do so, we're going to use the same distinct customer measure, but with that we're passing the flag new customer equal one as a set expression. Again, the context is stored externally and it applies to the measure here. That provides us the value of 11. So we have new 11 new customers. Then comes the sales, which is nothing but the sales measure, which is sum of sales amount. Then we want to calculate sales contribution by new customers. For that, we're going to again use new set syntax by externalizing the set expression with the flag equal one and cells. With that, we can now compute average cells by new customers. Well, to compute average cells, we are dividing the sales amount with the customer new customer flag equal one by distinct customers. Now, point to be noted here is that since I haven't used the parentheses. The context is applied to both measures. So even though distinct customers as measure has no set expression, new customer flag is applied to that as well. And that's how the average is computed. Now, if I want to show percent contribution by the new customers, then essentially, I need to divide 35,942 by 115 million or so to get the number. So, so here we're going to get a little deeper into the inheritance rule. All right, so first is the average customer expression, which is this. I can copy this expression and let's start with that as a new measure, right? And here, if I put parentheses around this, then this ensures that the modifier is applied to both measures. Now I want to divide that by cells. So if I use cells as a measure here, that gives me the percent value. All right, so let's change the format to the percent Right, 6.03%. The other point that I want to mention is if there was no parenthesis here, and if I use this, the number changes because the context applies to all three measures. Right, the only way this will change is if I type the expression sum of sales amount and pass an identifier of one. Now, since I pass the identifier, this expression will ignore the uh, set expression or the context that's been provided external. And this will compute the same amount, essentially the 3%. So you see here that either I can use brackets or I can write the denominator expression with an identifier of one, because it has an identifier, it will ignore 
the, the external context of this uh, expression. So that's all there is. Uh, I hope that you see with this now, it opens up tremendous possibility of reusing the measures rather than writing additional measures, which makes it harder to maintain them, and it provides greater flexibility when you write your set expression. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.